Good evening and welcome to the X-Files here in the heart of Salt Lake City where courageous people share their journey from the religion of Mormonism to a relationship with Jesus Christ. I'm your host Bishop Earl and I thank God for this opportunity and I thank the many volunteers who spend hours getting this prepared and uh, making this possible. I was LDS for over 60 years. I have a love for the LDS people. But I also came to, come to, came to find out that there were things that, I, that didn't make any sense. And after studying them, I realized that I was following the gospel of Joseph Smith and not the gospel of Jesus Christ. And I'd like to welcome tonight Glenn Schultz, who's our guest tonight. And uh, Glenn, welcome. Thank Appreciate you. Appreciate having you tonight. Thank you. You were born LDS? Yes. Tell us a little bit about your history. I was uh, raised LDS. Um, there were times as a young boy that I went uh, alone, oftentimes. Um, I believed the gospel. I your studied the gospel. Your family wasn't active? I'm My sorry? family was active, oh. semi active uh, at times. But then most of the time it was just me. My dad would call me bishop. Everybody would be staying home. But I really liked, you know, <laughs> I liked it. And, okay. uh, but I grew up. I grew up in it. Um, I believed it. I. I really sought, the peace that I now have in Christ. I sought through Mormonism and exhausted the church for, for yeah. that. So you were active even in your teen years. You were a scout yeah. and. Oh yeah, I was active. Did you go to seminary until I was forty six years old? Wow. And um, had had uh, was married in the temple. Had my children sealed in the temple. Was uh, elders quorum president, young men's president. Um, you know, I had challenges in my life, a sinful nature that I exhausted. Uh, my son told me that I was in and out of the church, and I said, "No, the church was always there. It was always my moral compass, but I was in and out of sin, mm -hmm. and I'd always seek the the church to uh, their regulation and their doctrine in order to get closer to God, which." I struggled with for years. So you had a good testimony of Joseph yeah. Smith and the Book of Mormon? Yeah, I bore my testimony. I, I believed it was true. I, I believe that Joseph Smith restored the gospel. I, yeah, I <laughs> believed it all. You went through the temple, you mentioned. Mm -hmm. uh, what, how was that experience for you? Well, I, I went, uh, I liked going through the temple and I sought this, this um, peace that I now have and then I didn't know what I was seeking but I enjoyed going to the temple and I, I remember going into one of the rooms that they have after the celestial room mm -hmm. going in and praying and just pleading with the Lord to um, you know something was missing and I couldn't tell at the time I and mean, it's it's obvious in my life now, knowing the truth, what I was looking for, but I was oblivious to it then. And you, again, married in the temple. Was your wife active then in the yes, church as well? Yes, And your children yes. and everyone My children's raised? mother is still very active okay. as, as a Mormon. Um, yeah, very. So what happened a little later in life then? Uh, um, I, you know, the challenges you have in life, the tribulations the Lord promises us in this life. I have a handicapped son that uh, at one point he was sexually abused by one a, a young boy. I was a Mormon at the time. I uh, had an experience with God that I've, he, I felt my knees just because I didn't like where my life was going. I alienated my children. I was looking to kill this boy. It was just consuming <laughs> me, the revenge, the anger. And I fell to my knees not liking where my heart was going. And God came in in a moment and put forgiveness in my heart. But it wasn't until about a year and a half later that I realized it wasn't forgiveness. It was love. And so I'm going through a divorce, going through LDS family service counseling, and they're, they're telling me these were born-again experiences. And, um, but as I read in the New Testament, I was longing for this new creature, new heart. I said, where is this? Where is this new creature? And I didn't have this peace. And I continued to, to seek this peace, and my brother or my sister and my father were watching a TV program. And this guy, this pastor, was talking about this born-again experiences, and I was interested in that. Yeah. And uh, I was going into a bishop's court the next day. Wow. Yeah, I, I was really sincerely through the Elders Church trying to put my life in line with, with God. And um, I called into a show, and it ended up that I gave my life to the, to the Lord uh, over there. And I had no idea what, what was about to change. What happened on the show? Yeah, um, I was calling. I wanted to know more about his born-again experience. I told him a little bit about the court. Um, 
and uh, he asked me to give my life to the Lord. Over the air? Over the air. I thought I had, I, you know, because I heard the Lord's voice as a Mormon. When people told me that I wasn't a Christian as a Mormon, I would be offended. And, um, but he asked me to give my life to the Lord, and I said yes. So he prayed over the air, and I had no idea what was about to take place. I, um, about, this happened in 06, and in November of 07, I was born again. Uh, it was a three day, but it was like one day. I can't discern between the days, and God had given me three things. And uh, at that point, everything changed. And I was so consumed with the Bible that uh, I went through it a dozen times in eight months. And I wasn't attending a church, wasn't anti-Mormon, anything. As a matter of fact, I later met this guy, and he wanted to talk uh, about Mormonism and Joseph Smith. And I said, I didn't want to hear any of that. I'm still Mormon. And I want to know more about your born again experience. What was that about? Well, I know young uh, earlier you'd done a lot of study. Yeah. And what did that teach you? Well, I I was uh, what the Mormon theology was teaching me, and I was trying to get this peace. And they were telling me these experiences I had with God were these born again experiences. I felt like, where's this new creature? And I started studying being born again through the New Testament. And that's when I met this, uh, this pastor. pastor. And um, Do, and you'd never felt born again in the Mormon no, church? No, How do you explain that? Uh, I mean, you've been active and temple and everything. You, well, you didn't feel you had a relationship with Jesus? As I look back now and standing in the light of Christ, I can look back that Mormonism brought you to the name of Jesus Christ, but not to the cross, not to the blood that washes us. In Hebrews in chapter 7 it talks about where the blood never washed the Jews when they sacrificed these animals. That it was later that when Jesus Christ came, the Holy Ghost came, that we can um, be washed in and clear our conscience, which is this peace that we have with God. And this is the born again experience. Yeah, when I was born again, God had given me three things. He gave me an understanding of grace, which, and it was just what just happened I didn't do anything to deserve it, nor did I deserve it. Wow. He took away all my habitual behaviors, all my guilt and shame, and a liberty that I just, it's indescribable, that just was this um, freedom. And I remember as a young boy, as, as a, a Mormon, I was about 12 years old, not feeling worthy, and I took the bread and I held it in my mouth, and not feeling worthy to take it, because I was sinful, I took the water and held it in my mouth through sacrament, which is an hour. Wow. By that time, it's soup, so yeah. I, after sacrament, I ran down and spit it out. But I, I wanted to live by that. So you always had a sincere desire to, to serve God mm -hmm. and be with Him. You're a member of the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints. Why don't you have or better yet, I guess, why don't Mormons have this relationship with Jesus? Well, I, um, the only thing that I could say why they don't, I was prideful, and I believe it was my pride that kept me in my ignorance. I was proud of being Mormon. I was prideful in the difference in their theology and the, the, the families can be forever, which is, you know, exclusive to Mormonism. Um, all those things kept me prideful, and then the positions that I held and, and whatnot. And you were in the only true church. Yeah, I believed that at the time. Well, isn't it strange, though, that we don't have this relationship with Jesus in His so-called true church? Yeah. <laughs> That's odd, isn't I, it? I think uh, absolutely. And is it because of the, I would have to say, it's part of, partly because of the doctrines that Joseph Smith added to the, I mean, he's discounted the Bible, but he's also added all kinds of doctrines, ru rules, requirements, ceremonies yeah. for us to be saved. And, and through your born-again experience, you realize that's not, it's not, not it's necessary. Not the There's nothing that we need to do save believe who he is. Confess that he is Confess the Christ. Is. And yeah. What's the Bible meant to you differently as an LDS I, and as, a, as after, a Christian? After being born again, I uh, had sold everything I had gave everything else away and burnt the rest, and I moved to a, a school that's well known for teaching the Bible word for word, contextually. And um, that's all I wanted. And it just seemed like the most natural thing to do. It wasn't that I said, oh, I'm going to sell everything. I just, just did it. And um, I wanted to learn the Bible. I didn't set out to be a pastor or a minister. I didn't even know what they meant. I didn't even know what a pastor was, just the word and that they preach. But, um, 
you know, the school was a real challenge because of where I've been in Mormon theology. I mean, right. I'm, in es I'm in eschatology in there. I'm saying, what? You mean Joseph Smith isn't going to touch, or Jesus Christ isn't going to touch down in Missouri? I mean, it's, it was such a change that a challenge in the school based on my history as a Mormon that my grades reflect that challenge, but I graduated. Oh, good for you. Yeah, it was, uh, and the Bible is, is everything. The Bible, after being born again and the power of the Holy Spirit opening up the truths to the Bible, um, you know, just adds to that liberty that Christ gives you. You know, one of the things as LDS that I, I read the Bible several times, but there are scriptures in there that now after I've been uh, born again that I, I didn't even realize were in the Bible. Yeah. Have you run across a few of those? Oh yeah, I've run across ones that Mormons use to justify their theology, and they're entirely they're out taken of context. out of context. Yeah, and, yeah. yeah. that's a whole different. Uh, I'm I'm not much of um, going back and and looking at Mormonism as much as I I believe that I never decided to come out of Mormonism. I love being a Mormon. I had no idea being born again would would take me away from that. But it wasn't a decision to come out. My decision was to pursue God, and the result was the truth that He's given me. That's a great story. Uh, not, not challenging, or not feeling like you wanted to leave the LDS Church, but that you wanted a relationship with God. But tell us some of the things that's led you to then feel that the Church wasn't true. Um, it was interesting, and um, I call into the show in 2006 in January. The Lord had given me a, a dream, and uh, I have never had one since, or you know, before that. But I'd written this dream down and kind of discarded it. Uh, it was significant, but I didn't realize how significant until I was born again. And uh, in the dream, it's very short. I had done something that I was worthy of death, and that I dishonored myself and I had to die. So I took a sword. And I put it through my chest and pull it out, and uh, I knew I wasn't going to die, but that I had to. So I took another sword, and it wouldn't penetrate my skin. So I knew I needed the same for sword. They brought the same for sword back, and my brother and sister at the handle, and they push it through my chest to make sure it pierces my heart. And they pull it out, and I knew I wasn't going to die because the Lord had work for me. After being born again, I knew in Hebrews chapter four, uh, verse twelve says the sword is powerful, or the word of God is powerful, quick. Like a two-edged sword. Sharper than a two-edged sword that would divide soul and spirit. So uh, while I was in the Philippines on a Christian mission, almost a year later, the Lord gives me an interpretation of the dream. And I thought that, you know, as a Mormon, the theology is that we're born innocent, that you're born into sin, that we existed before, and that um, all that time that I had tried to overcome this sin that... Um, so easily beset me that uh, it just, uh, I thought that I had to die because I was, I didn't overcome the sin. But when the Lord interpreted the dream uh, is that I was worthy of death being born and that the sword that I carried as a Book of Mormon or with the Book of Mormon trying to pierce my own heart all that time that I'd spent, the sword that I picked up and wouldn't penetrate my skin was the Book of Mormon. And then when they brought the same for sword back, the only two Christians in my family are at the handle. Wow. and they push it through. Um, which, it was interesting because once the Lord interpreted this dream that uh, we're not born innocent, it opened up a part of the Bible that was, uh, was not available to me based on my something, own beliefs and my own something interpretation. Something you just didn't understand yeah. before. So it was just... Now a, you had a follow-up experience with yeah. someone that was interesting, I remember you saying. Yeah, and um, I had this, I have the dream in 2007, the interpretation in June of 08, and then March of 09, a girl calls me up um, that I dated 30 years ago as a Mormon. And we had a very stand-up Mormon relationship and honorable, uh, and all this time she's been teaching her daughters that this is the kind of Mormon that you want to date. And uh, <laughs> Glenn Schultz. <laughs> yeah, well, you know, as I get talking to Mormons, they don't want to talk to me after a couple of times, but we continued to talk for a couple of weeks. And, she said, I never told her about the dream. I just told her that my born again experience, I'm no longer a Mormon. And she says, I've had this uh, dream. And she says, in the dream, I'm handing you this Excalibur sword. Oh my goodness. And she said that she's had it three times and that she needed to tell me. She's had the dream three times? Yeah. And so I have her on the phone and I have my hand like this. And I said, Lord, you want me to pierce her heart with your word? And he said, yes. And uh, she says, 
does this mean anything to you? And she has no idea what's going on. Are you on. crying at this point? I'm I mean, beside myself. I, I I'm just imagine. totally beside myself. And I says, are you willing to do what the Lord wants you to do if you know it's Him? And she said, yes. And I said, okay, let's talk in a couple weeks. And then the Lord just brought up for 20 minutes everything in my life that's happened. My son being abused, my little brother dying. I lived with my aunt that was killed by her husband and then he shot himself. And the Lord just brought all those up and it was strength. And he said that he would use those for his good. So since I graduated from the school, I've started a ministry, um, and it's uh, Piercing Hearts Ministries. Piercing Hearts Ministry, and you're yeah. sharing the Word. and Yeah, there's been lives that have been changed by the power of the Spirit, who come to the knowledge of Christ. We all have experiences in this life, and not all of them are pleasant. They're not all very peaceful sometimes, and it sounds like you've had your share. Mm -hmm. Would it have helped you to go through those had you been a Christian before instead of spending those first 40 years or so as an LDS person? You know, I, I try not to think about that because it kind of gets you into a depression if you think more and more about what you lost and all that experience. You figure God's done God's His using work. It. And, and, and through tribulation, we either stay in that misery and don't learn, or by the power of the light of Christ, we come through stronger and seeing it for what it is and what He's trying to do in our life. Wow. So did this girl uh, from 30 years ago? No, whatever. she's actually still Mormon. Is and, um, you know, the Lord asked me to pierce her heart with His Word, and I just continue to seek Him for the time and the place and what He wants to do. Well, I admire you studying and reading the way you did to come up with some thoughts about being born again. I've read that scripture in John many times, that we need to be born of water and of the Spirit. But you just it sensed that you had not ever had that relationship or that experience and to call the pastor and, and get that uh, prayer and that must have been a, a great freedom for you. And Yeah, the, the freedom came in those three days. I had no idea what was, what was going on. Now I can look back and where Jesus says, nobody comes to me, save the Father, draw him. I can see where that was happening. And these bad experiences in your life, you feel like Jesus is, what, how do you feel about those? Um, right now, our ministry is based on people seem to be coming that are at the end of themselves. They've been challenged by life where they are lost. They've just exhausted every resource, mostly uh, either Mormonism, either real, you know, rehab centers, and they, they come uh, looking for change. And, you know, what, one thing that I've learned that the Lord has taught me, the very power of change is Jesus' love. When He shows us that love, and we know that, and He breathes His life into us, our life changes. New creature. And that's a great promise for everybody, yeah. isn't it? I mean, right. it's not just for the uh, former Mormon or somebody that's tried to be good or something. Yeah. It's, it's a gift for all of us. Absolutely. Anyone that will turn their lives over to Christ. Yeah, and, and it's usually the meek. It's usually not the one that's wearing the suit. I had a Mormon ask me, well, how can all these apostles be wrong? Yeah. Yeah. What'd you say? I says, well, that tells me who you're following. <laughs> you know, uh, what she's looking at. Most Mormons, I think, are, are, are uh, Mormon because they have rested. They've rested in the culture. I've learned that there's three theologies of Mormonism. One that you're raised with in the church, and then there's one that you're taught in the church. And then there's one that after I left, there's, that's not talked about, that's not taught at all. That's actually avoided. But I didn't know all this until I came out until, of Mormonism. I think it's been mentioned on the program here that we, we former Mormons know more about Mormonism now than we ever did yeah. before. Well, standing in the light of Christ, you can't help it. Yeah. yeah. And uh, do you feel like uh, there was anything particularly uh, that drew you you said you were active and following. Did you ever run across questions that you had about doctrine no. or anything that ever struck you funny? I didn't. I didn't really answer. I didn't read anything unless it came out of Desert Book. Okay. And um, <clears throat> but I really didn't question anything except for this born again experience. And as the LDS Family Services, I was going through a divorce. They would tell me that these experiences with my son born. Uh, were born again experiences, and uh, that was the only question I really had. But, uh, you know, looking back, uh, Christians will ask me, well, what if they believe this, and how can they believe that? And I'm saying, well, you, <laughs> it made sense as a Mormon. 
But where we're at in the light of Christ, it does not make any sense. So tell me about your first uh, Christian experience, so to speak. In a... um, <clears throat> I was probably one of them <clears throat> as I was in the Philippines. Now, this was a Christian mission. Christian you were on. mission. How did you end up on that first? Well, the dean of the school asked me, and they said that they normally don't because they usually have to be enrolled in school, and I hadn't been enrolled in school yet. But he asked me to come, and you know, and after selling everything, I gave me the money to do that. And wow. um, and how long are those missions? Uh, they were just two weeks. This was my real first experience because between the time I was born again and then, I Going only to went school. to a small. This pastor had started a, a Bible study, and they were, you know, very small. That was the only experience I had with Christians. But here, the Christians are playing guitars and instruments, yeah. and you know, yeah. Mormonism. That's not. No. That's not right. right. That's not sacred. Um, How is that teaching of the Bible different? I'm always interested in that because uh, that struck me so differently to to go through a, a, a session with a pastor or someone teaching out of the Bible compared to the in the Mormon Church. Uh, it's refreshing now. Yeah, it's. I, I don't know. I remember going through LDS family services and their counseling, and they never once opened up even their Book of Mormon or their Bible. Um, they're it's just. Uh, and even, you know, going to church, uh, they do use scriptures, but it's in segments and bits and pieces and based on their theology out of context. Okay, so back to the mission, then you were explaining about yeah, your... Um, these missionaries, these Christians, my first experience of being, you know, uh, around Christians 24-7, they'd raise their hands when they were singing. Isn't that different? And they'd close their eyes when they're singing, they're playing the guitar and having the drums. And I remember standing there, and the song was beautiful, and I just started crying, and uncontrollably, and a full-time missionary come up and asked me, he says, what, are you okay? And I, I asked the Lord before he had come up, I said, Lord, what's going on? And uh, I wanted to blurt out the answer, but I didn't know, you know, if it was Christian, but the Lord <laughs> said, you're being crucified in me. Oh, the man. old man was dying, and uh, this experience, these experiences are, um, M moving and then it was interesting because as God did these things and then I opened up the Bible they were biblical and became a new creature like yeah. you said before everything's changed yeah little things and and on a daily basis yeah. I imagine what is it that the Mormons don't or generally misunderstand about Christians do you think uh, right now I have a lot of uh, friends that are Mormon and I I believe they uh, throw stones at me while they stand in their shadows. Um, I think that, you know, they're, as I was before, um, prideful. And, you know, if you confront them about what's wrong with their church, as you would me, I would have stuck my banner deeper in the ground and said, I'm Mormon. Yeah. Um, but I, I think they really, I don't know, it's individual what, what part they're missing. And if they're being drawn to the Son by the Father, uh, and if they pursue hard after God, it's, uh, God will honor that, and God will come into their life. I know there's that concept of uh, eat, drink, and be merry kind of a thing where the Mormons feel like, gee, now you're a Christian, you can do anything you want. Is that, uh, is that how you saw it? Um, I know uh, the liberty that I have. And I know that if I do certain things, they would judge me accordingly based on their theology and condemn me for that. That's why I spent so many years fighting the sins that I had right. that, 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 uh, that were just never able to overcome. But in Christianity, it's almost a, I don't want to disappoint God. Yeah. He changes your heart so you're not inclined. Or if you do sin, and we're all sinners, we yeah. all fall short. But we're, our desire is to be closer to God. And in order to do that, you want to love yeah. Him and love your fellow well, men. For what He's done for me, the only natural response I have is to love Him. And to love Him is to do the things that He wants us to do. Yeah. Love one another. Yeah. You know, teach each other, reason together to come to the saving knowledge and the power of the Holy Spirit who bears witness of the truth. And is there any truth you're afraid of now? No, that was interesting, Isn't I found, it? because as a Mormon, I wouldn't read anything. I know, that's exactly yeah. right. You just, uh, you're, a, I don't know if it's a fear, but you're just, yeah. I don't want to look at anything, yeah. because it, I don't know whether they think it's going to influence them, or... I think that was one of the reasons that when after being born again, I didn't go to a church, I didn't go to uh, 
you know, I was just afraid of being misled again, so I spent a lot of time in the Word. I went through it at least a dozen times in eight months. And wow. just was so, and just Mormonism was falling by, you know, by the wayside. Just everything you looked at was, yeah. was not what you yeah. thought out of the Bible. And there was another thing, and a lot of uh, Christians, um, come, Mormons coming out of, of Mormonism, is the reaction to family. But there's a promise. The Lord says that His word would divide. There'd be five in one house. You know, there'd be a mother against daughter-in-law, father against son. There's a promise in there, and there's strength in that. And I, you know, I would, uh, the Lord had really given me the strength to see relationships for how they are and not be consumed with, I've lost them. I have a daughter that, that uh, flew out to California and went home early because she said, you're not the same. It's not what I believe. And she has, our relationship has never been the same. But you feel more of a trust in God oh, yeah, and His will me. and whatever happens, happens. Yeah. And we can't judge other people. No. I know there are good people, but they, of course, need to turn themselves to Christ. But we trust in God for everything. Absolutely. Yeah. You've got just a few minutes or a few seconds, I guess, left. Uh, what do you tell the LDS people? I, I don't know that, uh, I would just say that we love you to pursue after God. Pursue hard after Him, and uh, know for yourself. Don't settle for a culture. Don't settle for what men tell you. Look for yourself. Glenn, thanks so much for sharing your testimony and You're your welcome. story today. It's very interesting, and it's Piercing Hearts Ministry. Yeah, you go to piercinghearts.org. All right, and look for that. Uh, there's such freedom in Christ and such a joy and such a peace, and I, I don't know why the LDS don't understand it, but it's definitely something they're missing. Appreciate you being with us tonight, and we look forward to seeing you next week. Good night.